It's been long enough now that we have a way to work out the ultimate stats of any pal to see what they will be if fully maxed out. So they have the highest possible individual values, 4 stars, have fully upgraded with pal souls, have an 85% increase of attack with 4 traits and are level 50. The point of this list is so you can choose from the start of the game the highest possible damage team for fighting and get started on leveling them knowing that there is literally no stronger pal available to find in the game if you were to spend the time working on maxing out their stats. And I have to say some of these are surprising on who is the strongest when all is said and done. Legendary pals are at the top of the tree, but I'll give you the best pal of each type for non-legendary as well. Lastly, a big shout out to palpedia.net who have made an amazing calculator with these stats all in one, so you can work out your own pal's future values, and that's what I'm using in this video to showcase the list. And you can use it too, I will put it in the description, to see what the potential stats of any of your pals are, so check that out. Anyway, let's take a look, and if you simply want to see the list, then skip ahead using the timestamps. So here is how it works. There are five ways that you can have a pal with better attack. The first one, which is the most difficult to control and requires a lot of luck, is the individual values. As you know, when you catch a pal, it has random stats, and even between two identical pals, their stats can be different. That's because every pal has a hidden individual value of between 1 and 100. The number determines the pal's stats, and you can have more defense, health, attack, or less, and ultimately it works out at around a 30% bonus if you were to get a pal with the highest possible individual value. Which, as we're going to see, is not exactly easy to do. The problem is that at level 1 or lower, it's very difficult to tell the difference. So if you're breeding a pal, for example, Mozzarina here, one with a 1% increase in damage and one with 30% increase in damage, when they're at level 1, that only means there's a 1 difference in their attack. I have one Mozzarina here with 103 and one with 104. I know the one with 104 is going to have a higher attack value in the end, once I level it up or increase its other values. However, this other one I have is also 104, and I can't tell when they're at level 1 if one of them has a 2% increase in damage or 30, and I won't be able to tell until I start leveling them up. And even then, at level 50, the damage difference won't be too significant. So ultimately, when you're looking for a pal with a high individual value, a lot of luck is needed, and a lot of testing because you're going to have to level up the pals that you do have to see if their individual values are high or not. But for the rest of the things, you can have a lot of control over them. So the next one you want to do is breed pals with four attack stats, and in this case we have Luck, Legend, Muscle Head, and Ferocious. There are a few other ones available as well. But either way, you can give a pal a maximum increase of 85% to their attack. Now at level 1, our Mozzarina has an attack of 192. You can increase your attack with Pal Souls, and the Statue of Anubis will allow you to increase your damage up to 30% for attack, and in this case, it's what we care about. That brings our Mozzarina up to an attack of 250. After this, we can give Mozzarina 4 stars in the Pal Condenser, with 116 Pals needed to get to 4 stars, but that will bring his attack stat up to 300. Last but not least, we can level him up to 50, and this will give his ultimate maximum stat for damage to 989. So that is the highest possible damage a Mozzarina can do. It's simply impossible for you to have one with a higher attack stat than 989. And unfortunately for Mozzarina, he actually has the lowest attack stat of any pal in the game. Even Lambal, when maxed out, has an attack stat of 1272. So if you're hoping to have a good team of Mozzarinas, then you won't be able to. Anyway, we can use these to check out the stats of every pal and see which ones, if you were to spend the time working on them, would give the highest damage of any of the pals. Let's take a look. The best normal or neutral pal type is no surprise, it's Fenglope, with a potential attack stat of 1835. Surprisingly, Pal DS the legendary one has only an attack stat of 1976, potentially, which is not very great for a legendary, but its other stats like defense and health are a big improvement, so Fenglope is the best neutral pal until you can catch Pal DS. The highest attacking grass type was surprising, it's Verdash at 1904. I've never not chosen Lylene in a list because on base stats it's always higher, but once you max out their stats, Lylene's attack is only 1835 potentially, compared to the 1904 of Verdash. The best water pal is no surprise, it's Jormintide with 1976 potentially. And to be honest, there is not exactly a decent selection of water types in game, as Eurobe and Penking are quite decent, but 
there are hundreds of points of damage potentially below Jormantide. For the best fire pal we have two, Bushi at 2046, the same as Blazimuth, but with Blazimuth having better health and defence, he's going to be the winner overall for your strongest fire pal. The best ground pal is one that has the joint highest attack of any of the non-legendaries, and it's no surprise, it's Anubis, with 2115 potential damage. The ground type category is very weak and there's no other pals that come close to Anubis's potential, but it doesn't make too much of a difference since you can breed and get an Anubis pretty early in the game. Orzerk is the strongest of the electric types and matches Anubis for power at 2115. Second place was Grisbolt, but with a damage maximum of only 1694, that's over 400 attack damage lower potentially than Orzerk can have. The game's best regular ice type is not one I was expecting, and it's Ice Reptyro with 1763. The ice types are fairly weak in general in game, but Ice Reptyro is going to be your best bet until you can catch a Frostallion, which has an attack of 2256, which is the second highest in game. Another surprise one was for the dark types, and I always chose Shadow Beak whenever I made a list because its base stats were higher, but when you level them up to maximum stats, the best dark type is actually Hell Zephyr with 2046. Of course, Frostallion Noct has a better attack stat when you can get him. And ultimately Necromis with 2326 attack is the highest attacking pal in game. But they are of course much harder to catch, and if you're looking for just a regular one, then Hell Zephyr is your best bet. For best dragon, there's no real best dragon of just a dragon type. You have Orzerk, who is the best electric type, and he's also a dragon, so I guess he would be the best dragon. You have Jormantide, who is the best water one as well. Or you can choose, in this case, Astagon, with an attack of 2046, who is also a dark type. But really, the only dragon you really need is Jetragon, with an attack of 2256 damage. But if you really want to use some dragon types, then Astagon is pretty decent as well. So then guys, we there we have it, Fanglope, Verdash, Jormantide, Blazimut, Anubis, Orzerk, Ice Reptyro, Hell Zephyr, and Astagon, and the five legendaries Jetragon, Frostallion, Frostallion Noct, Palius, and Necromis. They are then your best pals in game in terms of pure damage, if you can get lucky with hidden values, four stars, best traits, fully upgraded with souls, and level to level 50. And unfortunately for Matsurina, he is the weakest pal in game when fully maxed out. Let me know what you think in the comments about the best pals in Palworld then, like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.